Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody a history junkie? Got one? Do you like to remember things of the past? How many want, likes to remember the things of the past? Even the good stuff. There's good stuff that happens. But it seems like <laughs> when I actually wrote this thing, some of this stuff didn't happen yet. So I can't really do this sermon. But remember the stuff that happened, the great things that have happened in 2020, right? Great things. How many agrees? Not so many. I got one. <laughs> I was kind of halfway up. I'm right there with you. It seems like we're just climbing out. It seems like things are getting better. And then all heck breaks loose. And then here you go again. Things start looking better. And then all heck breaks loose. And you wonder what in the world is going on. <laughs> You guys ever wonder that the last 10 months? Do you ever ask yourself, Jesus, when are you coming? Is it tomorrow? You know, how many for you Christmas was a little odd this year? Should I start it? I mean, we don't mean to feel that way. I don't mean to feel that way, but it's like, when you start to realize how many people you know or someone you know knew or is related to have died, I, does it get to you guys? I hear silence. <laughs> this is going to be interactive tonight. <laughs> and I know that's different. But it does. It does. It gets to us. We're human. We're human. And it seems like this year, wow. If it could go wrong, it seems to be going wrong. You know, but have you ever gotten where you, you might be down? Things might be going and you're kind of in a somber mood. And then God puts someone in your life, even if it's just someone that says hello, but someone that sparks your mood and then your mood is just joyful. Have you ever had that? Well, I got to tell you something. Probably, I probably had not the greatest move during Christmas this year. Because <laughs> seen a lot of deaths, not just here, but elsewhere. And then, and then comes along, it's like God does one of these, just drops it. And this is good. Drops a baptism. Right in our laps. Right, literally right in our laps. I get a call. Someone visiting down here, someone related to people in the church, where their child cannot have, they can't have their grandchild baptized up north because all the churches are shut down. Child's eight months old, almost nine months. So I get a call. Of course, it's yes. Going to do a baptism anytime, anywhere. And what a blessing. We had Holly here planned. Paul, the witness. And what a blessing. To baptize a child 
into the family of God. You know what baptism is? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> baptism is snatching the child out of the devil's arms in his grips. That child is now a child of God. That's what our baptism was and is and continues. Even as we struggle with 2020 and all its craziness, all its shortages, I still can't figure out toilet paper, but, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just crazy. You know, sometimes our hearts get filled with distress. And I think 2020 can be one of those times that it can be at times. And did you guys ever get to a point where you felt guilty? Maybe even that you, you think it's a sin where you may not have trusted enough. We're a small group here. <laughs> Early on in March, you know what I discovered? Jesus brings us right back around to his arms because we are children of God. We do things in our life that cause us our own distress sometimes. Other people do things to us that cause us distress. The world does stuff to us that causes us distress. Pandemics do stuff to us that causes distress. The devil, his job is to cause us distress. But remember this, you are a child of God. Remember this, you are not saved by your perfection. in your thought, word, or deeds. And I'm not trying to lay a guilt trip on anybody, because um, if, if you look at the gospel text, stay dressed, be ready for action. Oh, I could turn that one into law all day long. <laughs> that one would be very easy to turn into some really strong law. Be ready, keep the faith. Keep the faith in what God has done in Jesus Christ. Because after all, we can't, we can't earn our salvation. We can't. And in times of distress like this, we have to fall in the arms of Christ. To be covered by his blood, because that's exactly what our sins are, covered by his blood. Remember in the Old Testament when they... Uh, Spatter the lamb's blood. There's, a, there's an image for you. <laughs> now imagine a white robe spattered with blood. The altar spattered with blood. This image of covering sins. That was the old covenant for the forgiveness of sins. But now Jesus died and rose from the dead to cover our sins, and we receive that by our faith. Just as we receive his body and blood by faith, by the eating and drinking of the bread and the wine and his supper. I can guarantee you this, 2021 isn't going to change a whole lot. 
I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm not, you know, but 2050 isn't going to change a whole lot. There's still going to be stuff going wrong. There's been stuff going wrong ever since the original sin. And it will continue. But I can guarantee this. Remember that Jesus loves you. Remember that Jesus died for you. Remember that Jesus redeemed you by his precious blood. And you remember in the psalm, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord has made known his salvation. And we can give glory to God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.